context, what is an asset, what is a resource, and what is a tool? Yeah, those are, that's three great questions. Uh, I look at and everything I read says the family asset is the genius, collective genius, of everyone that's a member in the family. The resource is the institution of the family in which each one of the assets can draw upon to become brighter, to become better. And finally, the tool is the money. And the money is there which helps to shine and build more value on the asset. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. All right, now you get one of these people that come to you and you've got an initial situation uh, that you're dealing with. How can someone who is wealthy but out of control of their financial situation regain control? Oh, this is a very, very good question because it's very easy for anyone to get out of control. So the first thing that I believe that someone needs to do is first have a real look and evaluation of what is truly important and what is not. So there's a number of exercises the individual and the family should be taking. And the first one is something that my mentor had uh, told me and, and what he had me do was lay down and pretend that I was uh, in my casket. And then everyone that is important to me, my mm -hmm. wife, my family, uh, my partners uh, that I may be working with in business, my friends, and they would come over and I'm going to get a chance to imagine what they would say as they're looking over the casket. Would they say, Dick, you know, I really wish that you had done, listened a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Or Dick, you know, I wished we had gone on one more vacation. So I think that that is the first thing is to first sit down and start saying what isn't happening, what would we say if we were dead that is not being said about us, and then let me say that those are truly important things for us to accomplish. Mm -hmm. Once we have that, then we can start to go back and look at the financial. We should develop the financial plan around what is truly important to us so that we really will end up where we want to be. So at that, we take a look at the financial plan, and my thought is that you sit with the family, and you say, this is what's truly important, this is what we're spending money at, uh, on, and this is not helping us to become more successful. So let's take the next step. Let's now start moving the budget slowly, over time, to focusing on those things which are truly, truly uh, important to us to be able to hit when we are dead. Once we have done that, we've had three, four weeks of slowly moving it, one or two items a week, not totally moving it, but getting to work on them. That's when you go back and you start, let me look at my team. Is my financial team the right team to help me get over this hump? Do I have a tax preparer who is just filling in forms or does he give me really important advice? Do I have an attorney who is there and will write a trust or a will or a codicil if I call him or does he really add something to the table? And this is especially true if you have more than just financial assets. Financial assets are our savings accounts, mutual funds, stocks, bonds, anything that can be liquidated and you can have the cash back in a week or so. Mm -hmm. uh, so if they're going to be longer than that, they're illiquid, you should be consulting probably your, both your tax person and your uh, legal person just to make sure they work right together. The next thing you should do is making sure you have a good banker, someone who understands you, your business, your finances, and can add value there and someone then that can help mitigate some of the risk. Well, I can make all the money in the world, but what happens if I have one uh, accident claim that has gone through my maximum loss? It could eat up tremendous amount of, um, of the assets I've already 
built up, of the resources that I have, the money I've built up. And finally, if you don't have the ability to be the quarterback yourself, hire a quarterback. That's what the virtual law family office is all about, is developing and having the quarterback that will tie together your entire team to keep all projects moving forward that are important to you to hit your final goals. Mm -hmm. So there's that old movie, Adam's Family Values. <laughs> so start with the values and go from there. Okay, well, things are moving along. Okay, how does somebody get started with working with a virtual family office? I believe it starts out with the interview process. Now, the interview process should uh, last uh, probably four or five meetings before you would ever want to consider retaining someone. So they should not be charging, I believe, to have this kind of discussions with you. And now, and I have found, and, and this is my belief, is that if they uh, ask to see your financials as the first part of the first meeting, why don't you pass on that meeting? Because they're not looking at you and at the family and what, at the issues that you as the family will having. They're looking at what those assets are and how much money can they make off those assets as soon as possible. I've always referred to it as the little old, uh, the little red rider wagon. You're walking in and, you, and you've got in that uh, wagon a bag full of money and you've got an alarm clock. And the bag full of money represents the money you have the, to be invested and the alarm clock is how many years will it, is it there to be managed. And if the financial advisor is looking at those two items, they're missing the true asset. As I said before, that is what the family is all about, the family members, and they haven't looked at trying to help you to where you can use that money to make the family, value, uh, the family more valuable. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, we've actually covered our principal question. So I think what I'm going to ask, uh, if you're comfortable, or maybe you can sort of uh, uh, amalgamate or whatever, is maybe you can tell us a little bit, uh, if you will, uh, like a brief case study, of an example of, uh, of what you've done working with somebody in this virtual uh, office type of uh, arrangement. Sure. Years ago, I, I had a, a wonderful lady who was a client, and she's now passed away. And as we were having this discussion about what was important for her, and she told me about her wonderful son and what a job he was doing, and we were talking about her daughter who was a school teacher, and we were talking about all these other issues. She was now uh, had been divorced for quite some time, and she was in her 70s. As I was talking with her, I just said, and is there anyone else? And she said, oh, and there's Lenny. I said, okay, now who is Lenny? She said, he is up at Sonoma State in that hospital, and I never thought he would live past 13. He's 27 now. And I'm afraid that when I pass, I do not know what really will happen. So from there, we took and spent the next 20 hours, it was about four or five meetings, mm -hmm. two or three hours a, at a time, mm -hmm. just organizing what, wanted, what she would want. Would she want to have her son to be in charge? Would she want her daughter to be in charge? How would, did she want them to be in looking after them? Would it be in charge of financial, or would it be just a part of the looking after the family? And so we, from there, we slowly outlined and built a plan in which she could look after her son for the rest of his life. And then afterward, the money would be retained and sent back to the other two children. Now, Lenny had some sort of a special needs condition? Very big special needs condition. Okay. And it was both physical and emotional. OK, 